Uh, better news than the weather tomorrow is we're finally uh, rid of the negative political ads, at least for a while. They have seemed especially <laughs> abundant this time around. Jason Colthorpe here, though, to see how effective they have mm -hmm. been with voters. Well, unfortunately, quite simply, they do work, guys. Uh, but what voters don't like about them, in addition just to the negativity, is it makes it hard to tell what's true and what's not. Pam Hornberger protects predators. But get this, the closer you get to election day, you just can't escape negative political ads. Demonic possession, gender change therapy. TV, radio, billboards, even aerial attacks. I literally tune them out. They come on so often. But do they work on the average voter? Oh, wow, where do I start with this? One of them, like last week, came through with uh, videos of uh, performing abortion, that made me sick like I was about to throw up or something. I think you gotta be honest from, from the get go. Uh, the negative, the smear thing, you gotta know both sides. And if you don't know both sides, you're just gonna come up with something that's just kinda out there. And it's more or less pulling it from one side to the next. I don't think that's fair. Sometimes it's like the best way I can win is making someone else look bad. And it's kinda immature. I prefer you know, just stick to the facts instead of all the negativity. Frankly, when I watch some of them, um, the, the hairs on, my, on the back of my neck stand up. I mean, some of the stuff is really outrageous. Darla Bowen is a marketing and ad consultant. Ask her and the answer is simple. Campaigns and PACs wouldn't be spending millions upon millions of dollars on these negative ads if they weren't having the desired effect. The way that it's ramped up over time in the last several election cycles tells me that um, campaigns and candidates and action funds are finding that this negative advertising is working. Candidates are also finding a way to mostly wash their hands of attacking their opponent. The PAC money is allowing candidates to remain largely positive, talk about their accomplishments, talk about if they're not an incumbent, talk about what they want to do when they get in office. And then the negative campaign ads come in from other sources. By the way, our pollster Richard Zubin notes the negative ads are timely. There's a method to the madness. You see them early in the bigger races, and then they sort of ramp up later for the down ticket races, which is why you're seeing so many of the more obscure races now. And Bowen says this year's outcome will likely determine how much of them we'll see again in mm. two years. Oh, boy. Believe me, they're paying attention to where it works mm -hmm. for the future races. One of my political mentors used to tell me there's only three situations where negative campaigning works, when you're behind, when you're ahead, and when you're even. <laughs> So they always of course, start. that's how it works. All right, Jason.